that is larger than life. It is called... Texas High School Football. Only one show can bring the greatest sport from the greatest state into focus. Lone Star Gridiron. Here today with Greg Prophet of your Wellington Skyrockets. How you doing today, Coach? Man, I am really good today. It rained this morning, last night. We needed some rain up here, so uh, good day. We're almost the end of school, so even better. Wine and spring down, getting ready to go again. Um, summer's almost here. You said uh, graduation coming right up, uh, wrapping up a bunch of the uh, – uh, spring sports. Um, you've seen your kids out there playing in the other sports. You've seen them in the weight room. How's the spring going? Man, it's been good. Um, you know, we we have kids that do everything, just like every probably other small school in America. But um, our kids have uh, played football and turned around, and played basketball and turned around, and played baseball, run track, golf, tennis. You name it, we do it. Um, and it's been a good spring. Um, it's a little hectic sometimes because our kids that are playing baseball and track and tennis and golf are also in FFA judging contests or are going to band concerts or uh, anything like that. So um, especially at our level, things get a little bit crazy. But, our you know, our kids have been successful. And, uh, you know, one of those non-negotiables is it doesn't matter what we're doing. We're in the weight room at least two times a week. And so our kids have uh, – uh, you know, obviously gotten a little stronger in there. Of course, a little maturity helps as well. And so, you know, looking forward to summer and, you know, really for us in a small school, because our kids are going and doing everything all the time. The summer is huge for us, uh, especially summer strength conditioning. So, you know, looking forward to getting to that stage of things and, and going from there. All right. So uh, kind of walk us through your team. Who who Who's graduating here in a couple of weeks that you need to replace? Who's back? What kind of roles they might play this fall? Okay. Well, uh, um, you know, we had a great run last year and we do have quite a bit back. Um, we lose, uh, you know, s several guys that have played a lot of football for us. Um, uh, you know, our biggest probably hit is in our O-line and D-line because we hang our hat on those guys. And uh, we lose two O-line, D-line guys uh, and they, uh, that have played three years of football for us. So, um, you know, those are good football players. And as far as replacing those guys, um, you know, it's just a next man up mentality. And then uh, we do have a lot of skill guys right now, skill guys that are back. Um, we lost some good ones. Um, we lost a couple running backs um, and, and a guy that we moved all over the place that, you know, obviously you have to fill those spots as well. Um, but, you know, we have a, a quite a few more skill guys than we do um, O-line, D-line guys right now. So our biggest strength uh, right now, I would tell you, would be probably our, our skill positions and our athleticism, but our biggest weakness is going to be our O-line and D-line uh, spots and not having much depth in those spots. But, uh, uh, you know, around here, it's kind of that next man up mentality. We do the same thing from seventh grade to twelfth grade. And so, uh, you know, somebody's going to step in and fill those shoes and, um, you know, hopefully do a great job of it. And sometimes it takes – halfway through the season to put your puzzle pieces together and figure out who goes where. And so certainly feel like that'll be no different for us going forward and trying to figure out who goes in those spots and, and getting it all put together. Hey, uh, kind of walk us through your district, uh, who's in your district and uh, what you think you can see from them in the fall. Okay. Um, our district, um, um, last year we were the district champions and, uh, you know, second place was Clarendon. And, uh, you know, they, they're going through a coaching change. Clint Conkin had been there. They'd been running the, uh, the slot eye. Um, they hired um, from Boys Ranch, Aaron Wampler. Um, at Boys Ranch, he did a great job. They were very disciplined, fundamentally sound, did things right. But as far as what they're going to do in offense and defense, I, I don't really know. I um, mean, because you've got a new coach coming in. Um, third place was um, Shamrock and then, if you go again, they they got a new coach coming in, uh, Coach Skelton from the Metroplex. He's been up here in the Panhandle. Uh, coach Caffey went to uh, Colorado City to be the defensive coordinator. So, again, we don't know what we're going to see from Shamrock offensively, defensively. Um, and then Memphis was uh, in the in the 
four hole last year and they played Vega really tough in the first round of the playoffs. And Coach Gerardo does a good job with those guys in Memphis. And, and they're they're usually pretty dang athletic over there. Um and then probably the team that has the most kids coming back is Wheeler. Um Wheeler didn't lose hardly anything. Um they got I think they lost like two seniors maybe. Um, so you know they'll. I figure they'll be much improved. Coach Hoover will get those guys going and and very competitive. And then, uh, Kwana, um, Coach Jackson and those guys in Kwana, um, they they were a lot of seniors and they were beat up and banged up and had some um things that has happened throughout the course of the season, um, but they that they had to overcome. But uh, again, you know, our district wise, it's we just preached our kids that. Uh, I mean, you can't afford to not show up during a district game and get yourself in a bind by uh, losing district contest uh, if you want to win a district championship. And, you know, that's our goal. We were able, we were able to win it this year, but the year before, uh, Clarendon had knocked us off and kind of ended a streak for us. So you still have that kind of bad taste in your mouth and, and wanting to keep that district championship trophy in Wellington. All right. So let's go real big picture. You, you've been around high school athletics all your life. And um, you you grew up in a field house. Um, based on that perspective, seeing everything that's changed o- over the course of those years, what would you say is the biggest challenge facing high school athletics in Texas right now? Oh shoot! I mean, there's a lot of challenges in high school athletics right now. Um, you know, you you look. Um, the THSCA does such a great job of and trying to help coaches and fight issues. I mean, you could go a thousand different directions with this question because you could talk about NIL. Um, you could talk about the transfer portal stuff where, you know, they had that going to the to the house about the bill and transferring wherever you wanted one time and all that kind of good stuff. But, you know, I think the biggest issue, of, I, I'm going to say the word entitlement generation, um, where – You know, it's just kind of expected kids can show up and just think it should be given to them. Um, And I think the difference between good programs and great programs is that great programs do a good job of developing kids all the way up and that having to put the hard work in and and know that you're going to be rewarded at the end in some form or fashion. It may not be with a state championship. It may be with a second round playoff win. But the work that you put in and the grind and the process I just think it's so valuable uh, for teaching life lessons through athletics. Um, uh, Yes, you may win a football game because you put the work in from all summer long through football season. But at the same time, and, you know, when you when you graduate from high school, go to college, get married, have a wife, whatever, whatever career path you choose, those life lessons that you learn through athletics and having to grind every single day and put the work and effort in to be successful, I think that pays off in a marriage or raising a family or even in the workplace. So um, just the challenge of trying to help kids understand that um, in this day and age, I think is one of the toughest battles that we face as Texas high school football coaches. All right, so let's go from real big picture to, to small picture here, try and learn a little bit about Greg Provitt. Right. Um, what would you say your number one guilty pleasure is? No, shoot. I don't know. Man, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, well, I can tell you that, like, I don't ever get – I don't – like, during football season, I, I I mean, your nose is the grindstone, so you don't have many much free time or things to, that you can dabble in. I guess I'd like to sneak off to the golf course as much as I possibly can. Uh, I guess that may be my best answer. Um, of course, I have, you know, two kids, and both of my kids like going to do that too. So that's some one of those things I can go do with them and – and we enjoy getting out and I'm not going to say winding down a little bit, but, uh, you know, just being away from the the grind of football season or even the spring for that matter. All right, coach. Well, thank you very much for your time today and uh, best of luck as you wrap up the school year and head into the 23 season. Hey, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you and what you do for Texas high school football and kind of getting a spotlight on different people. I enjoy watching, keeping up and, it's a it's a pretty cool thing that you do. Well, thank you, Coach. Gridiron Warriors. Take the field in an epic 
battle that is larger than life. It is called... Texas High School Football. Only one show can bring the greatest sport from the greatest state into focus. Lone Star Gridiron. 